And we're back. And this time I'm making a video because of the upcoming Fire Five tournament. So um Probably a good time to know or to have some more insight into how to defend flags. Um, you know, during my active playing days, I became, you know, somewhat of a defense specialist, mainly because I have had, you know, I gravitated towards the, you know, the support and the assault kit, and you know, I said many times that the medic is the best overall inf kit or the essential inf kit, but. When it comes to 5v5 flag defending, nothing compares to support and assault. If, like, if you know how to use it properly. Um, and teams who have players who are good with these kits, who know how to nade well, who know how to, you know, tube well, and players who are good at using them defensively, you know, these teams will have an advantage. Or potentially have an advantage because it's a very powerful thing. Uh, now, in order to cap in a 5v5, you need to be able to obviously cap flags, but if you only cap and cap and cap, chances are you're, you, you're losing as much as you're gaining. So <laughs> one thing that I noticed, you know, throughout the years is that successful full caps usually follow immediately follow a su su successful flag defend and uh, often by one person defending against multiple enemies so my my sort of thinking is has been for you know many years that you need to give yourself chances for the full cap to happen so even though one person defending against multiples you have a low chance of success uh, if you succeed, you might cap. So, when you have that opportunity to take that chance, uh, you know, go for it. Uh, so, because like these days, um, I've seen a tendency, at least in mixes, that people are more concerned with just staying offensively all the time, which, as I'll get back to, is very important. But you need to, you, if you want to full cap, you need to be able to defend the flag and cap a flag at the same time. So, just a few things before I start with, uh, I'm gonna go through every flag, like on the standard maps and just give my immediate thoughts about it. So I don't know how long this will take, but prob probably a while, but I'm gonna keep it quick. I'm not gonna sort of stick around on one flag for too long. I'm just gonna give my immediate thoughts and move on. Um, and just kind of what worked for me in the past. But uh, first I need to just lay some foundation. So uh, just about my general defense philosophy, which is like, uh, you know, 5v5 is an information game. Um, as I've mentioned in previous videos. But, and one of the most important pieces of information is not just where the enemy is pushing but also how many of them there are because this allows you to sort of play the numbers game like uh, not just in numbers of how many you're going to spawn in but in terms of how much resources you should put into a situation because uh, you can actually create consistency there by i mean if if the if the extent of your think reasoning is that I'm just going to spawn in and frag everyone, if that's your thought and that's where it ends, you're going to be very inconsistent. So it, to think a little bit further about, you know, to have some general rules of how and when and how you're defending will create consistency. So as I said, it's an information game and you need to know how many of them are pushing. So it's vital for to call out this that if you know if you know how many if you if you see three guys see say you know at least three pushing uh, so so the people can know uh, and um, because this info gives you the 
it gives you what you need to be able to decide what to do. So my general philosophy is that you want to keep your offense going. You know, I'm, com uh, I'm coming back to the thing about offense, which is, you know, it is the most important thing. I'll agree. Uh, so you want to keep your offense going, but you also have to defend at the same time. So what do you do? Well, you always spawn in fewer people to defend than, than the enemy is attacking with. Uh, so this means that if they are two or three enemies pushing flag, you spawn in one to defend. If they are three pushing flag, you spawn in two. If they are four or five, you, you don't spawn in at all. Unless, like if they are four or five pushing flag, you don't spawn in to defend. Unless defending the flag means you full cap. Uh, so under normal circumstances, you probably don't spawn in to defend. You consider that flag lost. Uh, and uh, just to just to touch on like the the lost flag uh, principle here, because if in a five v five, if you are four or five on the same place, you fucked up. So if the enemy is four or five people pushing to one flag, they have made. Unless they are literally running for their lives and are about to be full capped, they have made a mistake. And the best way to punish that mistake is to just capture all the other flags. <laughs> if they push your, leave them, let them have that one flag and take the other three. Uh, so that's why you don't spawn in to such hopeless situations to defend. That's a wasted resource, and resource management is crucial. That's one of the reasons why Fiskus are so dominant at the moment. It's because they don't panic spawn. They spawn in the amount of people they believe will get the job done, and no more. So, um, but the reason you want to spawn in less to defend than the enemy is attacking with is because, simply, it gives it keeps your offensive numbers advantage like if if they are three pushing flag here and i spawn in to defend alone i'm one with three here yes but the rest of my team is 4v2 on the rest of the map so that means that if i manage to by some miracle defend this you have a chance to full camp and obviously the chances aren't great, but you give your like you're not losing much by spawning in one guy, or let's let's say there are three guys attacking and you spawn in two guys. Um, uh, so, uh, I mean, you keep your numbers advantage. You you have a chance to gain flags quicker than they they do. And if you manage to defend, then you've gained massively. So that is the general philosophy. Because uh, when you sort of over spawning in to defend, it, you know, it grinds your, like your whole offensive game grinds to a halt. And there is nothing worse for a squad leader who's trying to push offensively and to create openings. There's nothing worse than if your entire inf squad constantly spawns to defend. So you you don't want to overdo it. You want to delegate a little bit of resources, but not too much. So uh, that's about it. Let's get to it. So for this flag. Hotel, famously difficult to capture. A lot of people will spawn in tube. But what I have discovered is that if you are... So uh, during this video, I will assume that you're following the principle. So I'm every time I'm going to talk about defending a flag in this video, I'm going to assume that I'm outnumbered. Okay. Because like if you have an even number <laughs> situation defending this flag then tubing on the roof here is super effective. If you are 1v3 on this flag, not so much. 
And the simple reason is that even if you do correctly, uh, the time it takes for you to reload is longer than the time it takes for them to revive. So, if you're gonna defend this flag with the tube, you have to get a headshot first. Like, there is no other way. So, this is why, in recent years, I have favored the support kit. Because you have no cover in this flag zone. So if I if I get this going here, I can spray them all down, even if they're reviving. But even better, like I actually got the best spawns now. You can you can even jump down into the slope here. And they will be forced to either stay in the flag zone and risk getting naded, or push the ramp in order to stop you. So, you know, no matter what you do in a 1v3 or a 2v4 or a, well, a 2v3 or whatever, like, especially in a 1v3, which is, I personally think it's the most, f it's, it's the least amount of risk to defend 1v3. To spawn in two guys to defend against three, it's a little bit more risky. But to spawn in 1v3, one to defend against three is very low risk. So I'm just going to assume that we're 1v3 in all these flags. So even no matter what you do, you're still most likely to lose. But to jump down in the slope here and start nading, it's a decent thing to do. Like a decent, <laughs> decent chance. It's a decent move. Um, if they haven't spotted you, you can get the perma kill with the toe. But obviously a very low chance play. Now, spawning in the building here is like, if you catch them by surprise and you manage, and they are a little bit too far apart, then maybe you will be able to reload. But it is rough. So, what I will often do if I get a kill like this, you know, the the thing about that many people do wrong when they're defending this flag is that they stay out of the flag zone for too long because. There is no point to staying, th this is just like a general principle, where there is no point to staying alive here, as an inf, if they grey the flag. Like, if if you don't get the kills you have to, before, like, if you don't get the kills fast enough and your time is running out, you literally have no option but to try and rush them and hope for a miracle. Like, it's better to rush them and die, than to stay alive long after they grade the flag and has you know you have no chance so um or like uh, long after they have capped the flag uh, obviously if they just grade the flag you still have a chance to defend it but but uh if you spawn on this side this is also you know this is a decent spawn with the two but I would have to, like, I would go try to get to this wall as quickly as possible, because that, that means I can sort of jiggle around the wall here. But uh, this is definitely, you know, that roof position is not as powerful when you're one way 3 as people think. I would actually, if I'm spawning support, as I said, I would rather spawn down there. And if I'm spawning too, but I would probably rather spawn over, the, over there. So I'm not a big fan of that roof. The The biggest advantage by sort of def playing defensively on the roof is that you can use, use the LMG to sort of cover other spots on the map. But um, it's really, I mean, this is a tough flag, even though it's hard to cap in an even number situation. When you run V3, you you know, it's not that you should be able to cap it. So it's actually it's actually hard to defend uh, sometimes that flag harder than you might think. Now Northbridge, I don't know if there's anything particularly interesting to say here. Uh, if I spawn roof, I would definitely make my obviously you we all go to that corner to sort of see if we can get the tube kill here. But if they aren't offering themselves, if they're just hiding here, you have no choice. You just have to build the roof and get into flag zone. And uh, oftentimes that will be my, I mean, this is my preferred spawn. I would m most, I would 
love to spawn here with the tube. This is not a good support flag. This is a tube flag for sure. Um, there are no super bad spawns on this flag. This is the worst spawn. Because you, you sort of have to cross. Uh, they can probably see you from there. This is the best spawn for sure. Because you can get unspotted all the way up here. Oh, I switched too quickly. So definitely. Now, over to... The, the interesting thing about Master in general is that it has some of the most... It has some of the best flags and most shit flags on the entire... You know, the enti in the entire map pool. And um, this flag right here, Road, is probably the most shit flag in the whole game. Uh, because like even though Northbridge caps quickly, the position of Northbridge is actually very good. It's easy to get everywhere. This is shit. So I will not spawn in on I will not spawn in on road construction unless I have to. Uh, so a lot of times if we have salt block and I'm defending road, I would spawn salt block instead. Because road construction, in addition to being a shit flag, it's also hard to cap. Because the flag zone is very small and it's easy to nade it. So if I have infinite nades, you can defend this flag forever. Pretty much. I might even spawn Northbridge. You know, it's a little bit more of a stretch because... You know, if you spawn roof, it's gonna take you a bit long to get here, but this is, by the way, the best way to nade the flag. You want it to land right behind that pillar. Okay, that's true. I remember back in the day, I just have... Oh, shit, that's bad. Obviously, you have to get it over there, but... Oh, I think I'm nading a little bit f too far to the left. Yeah. So, um, obviously, if you spawn directly in the flag zone, if if I was to if I were to spawn road uh, to defend against three guys, I would probably spawn tube and hope for this spawn and a bit of surprise, uh, like that they don't spot me immediately. Like, if you spawn here with the tube and you, like, you know, you you get one kill with the M16 or you tube, you tube one or two guys at the same time. I mean, this flag zone is so small that you, like, <laughs> you might, you might have a chance to tube, to do, like, a two for one with the tube. So this is definitely a tube flag, in my opinion. Obviously, if you spawn down here with the tube, a bit shit. But... Yeah, this is a shit spawn. You risk getting the shit spawn. Um, I think this is, you know, as good a spawn as you can hope for, really. And it's still not good. So I will not spawn road unless I have no other choice. Uh, I would much rather defend road from far away. And uh, yeah. Overspawning road, definitely, definitely a big no, no, no. <laughs> Don't overspawn road. Now to the most interesting thing. You all knew this was coming. Uh, the thing about south block is that the position of south block is decent, or it's actually the positioning is very, very good. You you have the high ground. You can nade road easily. You can sort of get into the canal. You can go over there over, to, over towards red Oaks, you can go straight to hopeful like it's it's a good flag just in terms of positioning but obviously the block is real so it's um it's probably one of the worst flags to be locked down to but there is one thing about this salt block that makes it very very dangerous and that is this roof. 
So this is a little. Um, the, the the first off. If if they are in that little cubby over there, you can actually jump over here and tube them. And you can tube the block position on the flag there. So there is literally no part of this flag zone that you cannot tube from this roof. And the, the block position is even easier to tube from here. But so this is pretty much I'm not gonna say it's a hundred percent but if you're good at this you like the enemy team do not want to push this flag if they know that you're good at this and if you're here and this is one of the biggest chances for an outcut that you will ever have so here's the thing we all know how this works but Oftentimes when you get chased across the map in a 5v5, you, you, you go from one end of the map and you cap your way across and maybe you get a little bit unlucky and suddenly you're forced to attack the next flag and to cap the next flag in order not to get outcapped. So let's say you're running to south block and you, the flags are being capped very quickly behind you. Northbridge, quick flag, road normal flag but shit flag so the next <laughs> flag on your route just happens to be south block now here's the thing if one of the players on the other team had the you know presence of mind to go here 20 seconds before you're already capped like there is no fucking way you're surviving so if if you are th this roof Defending South Block from this roof is godlike if this is your only flag left, it's like an uh, insurance policy. If this is your only remaining flag, you can survive by going here. And you can get the wipe. And you can push out. But also, even more dangerously, if you have flag control, if you have hotel and road and South Block, and the enemy is stuck on Northbridge, trying to push out. This is also a godlike position, because chances are that they will rather try and push South Block. If they don't th think about what they're doing, they might just everyone push South Block to try to survive. And if you are here, you can stop them. It doesn't matter if you 1v2, 1v3, 1v4 or 1v5. You can literally stop them from this position. If you're good at this, you can. It doesn't really matter what they num the numbers they have. You can stop them. You have a good chance. I'm not going to say it's above, above 50%, but it's good. good. <laughs> it's good for, <laughs> for the type of situation we're talking about. And you can also defend road. Uh, so... This is the insurance policy. It's, you know, you'll see a lot of this in my <laughs> in the opening minute of my frag movie. <laughs> uh, there is uh, obviously if you if they're already on flag and you don't have time to go here. Tube is still a decent spawn. This is the worst spawn because they can see you. This is the um, if they're blocking here you can spawn here, but this is a, this is the best spawn if they are on flag and in this kind of situation usually i have experienced that often only one person will peek out at the time so the others will actually hide behind the wall there and one will peek aggressively and the good thing about that is that if you get that kill boom look for the revive if the revive isn't coming so um this is decent Another thing that also can work, I haven't been able to get it to work, but I know it can work in some situations, is that um, if you're a squad leader, this is especially good because you want to get yourself away from that block area so that the infers can spawn on you here and still get the spawn in, even if they're blocking the flag. 
So if you're about to be capped on this flag, for a squad leader to sort of just push out a little bit so that you can still get spawns in is good. But this is, this is obviously, it's a really good nading position for anyone who's in there. It's really impossible to stay there if you have a support kit over here. They will be forced to rush you or hide. So, but I haven't been like successful doing this, but I, you know, it has been in my mind that it's a possibility. So, what is the next uh, map? Whoops. Um, yeah. Let's just do Karkin. But uh, Muster is the like Muster is the tuber nader's paradise. It's uh, it's awesome. I don't know if I will have much to say about this, but um, I mean there are, uh, whoops, that is slightly embarrassing. <coughs> Obviously this is the obvious spot to sort of tube around the roof here, but uh, the one thing I don't like about this map and shark is that one person will be forced to sort of remain here out of action to s to um, to uh, sort of watch hotel if uh, one flag gets capped behind you so you're sort of playing 4v5 and I, I, I never like first off I, I'm horrible at sort of camping hotel uh, it has never been my strength <laughs> and I hate that job it's one of the worst jobs in the game so I don't really have much to say. Like, what I would usually do if I was forced to this position. Karkand is not a tubers map, in my opinion. It's a clear support map. If you know how to nade properly. And we, most of us know how to nade Karkand because we played it so much. But if I was forced to sort of defend Hotel, I would play a middle thing. I would sort of stay s somewhere around where I can sort of pivot between the two flags so I can sort of help out on um, square at the same time as I can sort of keep an eye out on hotel so this is just what I would do personally in a lot of the time if, if I was like I would prefer not to get stuck defending uh, hotel but if I had to like the flags are so close together, you can literally nade two flags from one position. And that's the one thing that makes this such a support paradise. It's like... Uh, and it's not that like... You only run for like 10 seconds over here. And then you can nade market. So, um... You can nade the palm tree. Right, like this behind the palm tree into the flag so um, to play like an active defensive role where sort of you're continuously defending that's what I would do I would spawn in with the support in more of like an emergency defense I would I would probably spawn assault and hope for north or south spawn on hotel and try to get one kill see what I can do like so um on square I would never spawn assault never ever 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 this is a nader this is nader's flag like yeah if you hit you can you can do that but it's super hard like, I don't know of anyone who would ever be consistent with that. 
And the main thing about defending properly is to defend in a way that grants you consistent results. You don't want this to be left up to luck. Whoops. Uh, for market... Uh, I, market is also a good tubers flag, which I mentioned in my tube video. Uh, the tube video, if you haven't watched it, it's the... Um, the well-rounded in flare part 2, I think. Um, but uh, if you sort of manage to get yourself to the palm tree, the tube is super overpowered. And this is also one of the famous scenes from Campus's frag movie where he defends against like four people from this position, just pivoting around here and getting tube skills. And, and uh, like, uh, it's just a super, super good... Um, once you get in here, it's a good tube flag. And it's a good tube defense flag from the roofs. Obviously, you can go on that roof, but it requires that you sort of know about it ahead of time a bit. Or that you that you somehow... To end up there at the correct time is a little bit hard sometimes. But this, this roof is much more sort of realistic. And uh, it's a good position. You can... You can cover... It's not a 100% kill to get someone behind that palm tree. It's a bit of an awkward angle. But um, if they're on either side, you should have it. And if you get the kill on the palm tree and the other guy is hiding there, you have to get down here. Uh, a mistake that a lot of people do is that they stay on the roof for too long. Like on South Block, that's a bit of an exception because the roof is your lifeline. But. In a lot of flags, you want to get down on the roof and get close and personal for the follow-up flags. So, um, I don't have much more to say about this. Um, support, definitely support on the square. That's all. And uh, in general, this is a good, um, this is a good uh, support map, as I said. Um, if you're good at nading. If you're not good at nading, um, support isn't good. In general. It's pretty much the same with the tube kit, like assault kit. If you're not good at tubing, it's not a good kit. It's just... <laughs> if, you're, if you're not good at tubing, this is just a worse than medic kit. Like, it's just like a medic kit without med pack. So, uh, that's not very good. Now Gulf. What do we have on Gulf? I think there are some interesting things you can do on Gulf. Um, incidentally, it's one of the maps. Like, I like if uh, what I mentioned in the beginning about uh, a mistake, it being a mistake of four or five people pushing one flag. For some reason, it often seems to happen on Beachhead on Gulf that people sort of over do like this over spawn pushes. Um, I don't know why, but it happens. <coughs> now, Beachhead is a bit of a weird one. Uh, I, I think, I think Beachhead is like a bit of a fifty-fifty support um, tube flag. I like to spawn support on Beachhead. Like, if you get this spawn, especially with this gun, this gun is better than the RPK, in my opinion. Like, not on long range, but on medium to close range, it's a lot better. It has a higher damage output, really. And, um,. Because a lot of times two or three guys will stand in right here. <laughs> you can literally spray them all down. In one go. It's not unrealistic. So that's where the assault is good. 
and it's obviously even better if you have help so if you have like um if you have uh, if you're not by yourself then then it's less of if you have someone with you to help you it's less chance that you're going to be spotted immediately and shot before you can sort of do damage um, the tube part is obviously that wall over there you can get some nice frags uh, as i said it's like and this spawn right here you can obviously insta frag the guy standing there Um, this is actually this is a good flag to defend and uh, you know if you're a little bit ahead of time as a squad leader or something or a third squad leader you can make your way to the UAV and make everyone spawn on the UAV if, they, if you're gonna spawn in more to defend so it's like uh, there are definitely things you can do or you can you can even defend from here obviously they can stand in that little uh, in the ruins there but if you know how to nade ruins, you can do that. So, um, yeah, this is a hard flag to cap. I mean, the only saving thing about this, saving grace about this flag is that you have two sides of this wall where you, that you can actually rotate around, but yeah, no, it's, um, for me, it would depend on the situation, on how I'm feeling, if I go support or assault here. Um, but this is definitely like a 1v3, like this is a, this is one of those flags where 1v3 is not with without uh, outside the realms of possibility, like... Um, so... Um, That's how it is. I do. Th I think I feel kind of similar about village. Like obviously, village is a much. <sighs> there is much more cover on village. It's a hard flag to nade because there are just geometrically there are a lot of angles here that can obscure nade damage, so people can stand all around this and all around this. And all around this and this and inside here it's a hard flag this is one of those flags where you just have to get in there and sort of try and occupy it um, obviously if you if you get the spawn on this side you can easily tube that guy in the ruins it's probably the first thing I would hope for if I was defending this flag is that I get the tube spawn here it's it's probably my sort of ideal scenario uh, that fence spawn is far away and the guy in the house can spot you um, yeah it's definitely good to sp it's definitely the best to spawn flag here or ruins and this is actually one of those places where you can actually do the bounce tube so it literally lands in there you don't have to go in the house you can just tube in from outside kind of cool Now, this is, Consight is like the mini south block. And you have two roofs. Forget about the crane. No one ever goes crane. It takes all, way too long. I have never ever been up there, I think. Don't, don't go crane. But um, that roof and this roof. Uh, if you have the elemental surprise, you can 1v4 here. And, um, you know, uh, about what I said earlier, that if four people are pushing one flag, you probably should spawn in there. Uh, if one guy is set up on the roof here already, then I think you can have a second guy spawn in here and try to do a 2v4. Like, it all depends, but if one guy is already on this roof, then the same for South Block. If one guy is positioned on this roof like this, and four guys are pushing here. If he gets help from one guy, he has like a 50-50 chance. Uh, so I, I, th I think that's worth it. Um, you can 
you can 2v4 in these kinds of situations if you're set up to do so. Like, don't panic spawn in to take on four guys, but if you if you're calculated about it and you're already set up, you can do it. Uh, it's a hard shot to do, but you can tube over there. Um, so, um, and you can obviously see, you can see very well Arty Hill and, you know, squad leaders pushing around here. So, um, Enemy units on the move. this is, this is definitely one of those positions that can fuck people up. Um, uh, as far as uh, sort of spawning in to defend when they're already on flag, I have had the, you know, I had success spawning support behind here because it gives you a little bit, you can actually see where they are and sort of nade a little bit and then push in and try and spray someone down. Um, so it's like, it's like whatever you're feeling like uh, but this might actually be one of the rare flags where i might consider spawning medic to defend and the reason for that is that i get i don't need massive amounts of nades but i get like two nades i can sort it or i can throw like a few nades and then get in here with uh, and sort of fortify myself on one side of um, if you have to stay, if you have to stay alive for any amount of time, when there's a chance you might take damage, uh, medic is a good kit because on this kind of flag zone, it's not unthinkable that you might end up in a situation where one, where the enemy is hiding behind there and I'm hiding behind here, and I sort of have to stay alive for a while. So uh, I might actually, I might spawn medic to defend here. But I have spawned everything. <laughs> like, I've spawned support on this flag, I've spawned tube on this flag, i spawned medic on this flag. I guess it depends a little bit on the situation and how you're feeling, but... Uh, this is not like one or the other. I think there are many different approaches you can work for this flag. But uh, one thing to keep in mind with this flag is that if you're getting pressured and you're about to get outcapped, you do have the possibility to sort of anchor down this uh, flag zone from the roof with the support kit. And this roof is actually quite versatile because it gives you vision all the way around here. So, um, and, and over here, and like, so um, it's actually, um, Consite. And uh, similarly to how on like if you're sort of getting, if you force the enemy to push consite with everyone and you're set up to defend it, you can really mess them up. So um, that's one of the things like let's say, let's say for instance that we're under pressure and we're about to be outcapped and we just captured city. And we're pushing on to Consite to cap it. And City is our only flag. If someone is fortified on Consite, you don't have a chance. Like, you're pretty much capped. Or you have a chance, but there is a very, very high chance that you're going to get capped. So in those types of situations, it, it's dangerous to push from one flag to a main. Because this flag is easier to cap and this flag takes longer, and the main takes longer to cap. So... If you have the chance to do so, it's actually better to push to another uh, quick flag, like uh, village in this case. Uh, it's not ideal, like, but when you're under pressure and you only have one flag left, nothing is ideal. But uh, that's a that's a big outcap opportunity for the enemy team if you're pushing from a quick flag to a slow flag. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind. Now this flag is definitely one of those flags that support kits can dominate. But it's not for sh like even if you spawn up here, they can nade you and they can easily spot you and they can nade you. So it's not like 100% but obviously there is nowhere in that flag zone that you cannot nade from from this position. 
So, um, uh, if you spawn on the LMG, I actually think that the tube is, is probably the best tube spawn you can hope for. Because it allows you to quickly, like, um, probably unspotted get to this corner. Uh, this this is usually something that most at least most good players will be checking it like this and stay on the edge of the flag zone here and check it so um, but obviously w if you get lucky with the timing and you spawn tube here you can obviously do a lot of damage uh, but uh, my go-to for this is how the flag has been sort of trying to sort of stay somewhat hidden behind here you can spot the flag here even uh, i don't think they can see you but you can spot the flag like this and sort of start nading before if you start nading before they actually spot where you are you have a little bit of a better chance to wipe them so this is definitely uh, but uh, you know you can also stay you can also hide on the roof with the tube if, you, if you're sort of thinking, as I mentioned, if you're thinking ahead, as I mentioned in my two video, the well run and inf player, um, one of the keys to sort of dominating with the tube is to be like 20 seconds ahead of the action. Because that allows you to set up ahead of time and be ready for it. Um, it's much more effective than sort of panic spawning in and trying to do something. But uh, yeah, it's a cool map go. So we had the Kark and I guess Sharky. Oh no, again. Now this is, this map is cool. Like, I, it's probably... Am I gonna say that it's my favorite except for Master? Probably. This is a great map. It's an amazing map. So, similarly to Hotel, this is one of those flags that you get stuck defending in 5v5s. Which is really hard. So, because th this is one this is in my opinion this is the hardest defense position defense sort of um, role that you can have in this game at least it, it is for me uh, this is the hardest one if you get stuck defending here if you fail <laughs> just know it's really difficult to do um oh shit no um, i messed up that. okay So I'm just gonna spawn medic for this because like one of the things that I'm gonna see if I remember this because I actually tried to figure something out like one of the issues with this flag because there are so many entrances they can take that ladder over there they can go up the stairs here they can go this ladder they can go that ladder they can come up these stairs and they can come up these stairs so it's like it has so many entrances and the reason I think why this is such a difficult job is that it's the chances are very high that they're gonna spot you before you spot them. 
the, the easiest job, the easiest task you can have here is if one guy continuously spawn in the main and you're sort of early spotting him every time. But realistically, they might not even come from main. They might come around from office building here, they might come there, they might go through the opening in the fence there, they might go around the building there from TV. The it's a really hard job. So uh, one of the things that I tried to do here when I was sort of trying to figure out how the hell do I do this was to see are there anywhere on this flag where I can spot all the ladders? And the answer is no. Uh, the closest thing... Oh, you see I fell down there. The closest thing is right there <laughs> at the end there. Uh, you can't spot everyone but you can get close to it. So right here you can obviously spot that ladder very easily. You can spot this ladder easily. So and you're hidden behind this little plywood thing. So if they come around here they might not even spot you. So this is one of the positions that I figured out. Okay this is decent and I can, I can sort of stay kind of hidden and spot this stair, that ladder and that ladder and I can spot flag to see if it's going down and I might even get a frag here if I'm lucky so this is one of those positions like <laughs> I haven't been able to test it out properly but because like how often do you really get stuck here but if anyone can make use of it I, I think there's potential here um, and the cool thing, if you see that they are on flag, let me see if I can do this. I think it, I think I just naded straight up here. Let me see. Yeah, you can actually nade flag from here, so you can use. Whoop! Uh oh! Oh shit! I was lucky. You can actually nade from here, and be on the flag within a few seconds. I, I think this is a decent move, a decent play. I did experiment with sort of trying to find a position over here where I can spot all ladders, uh, but I don't know if the, like, I mean, you can spot that ladder right there. You can spot this ladder and no. It's hidden. <laughs> it kind of makes you think that someone thought about this. But uh, I guess this, yeah, this is the closest. You you can actually spot all letters from one position. But it's obviously going to be hard. I mean, they're only visible for a few seconds on each time. So, but. If you sort of rotate very, it's going to be a very annoying job to do, to stay here for like minutes and minutes, <laughs> just looking around at these ladders. But, you know, to do like a continuous defensive role on this flag is horrible. So, um, but the, the good news is that this flag is easy to nade. So if you're spawning in like to defend when they're already on flag, this is actually one of the best spawns. Yes, it's also one of the spawns that they can easily check from flag. But it's also the best, one of the best nade spawns. spawns. And also, this is something I have done in 5v5s, is that I have sort of, similarly to on, on Karkand, I have pivoted between sort of defending this flag and sort of... Uh, going over here sometimes but this works best if you're not the main defender let's say you have another guy who's actually defending this flag then you can sort of help him if needed so that you know you can suppress the flag with nades if he needs help and you can always go over here and defend this flag um, now this flag is one of those flags that well, it's a good flag to nade, it's a good flag to tube, depending on where you are. It's also a flag where medic defense is also definitely, might be a good choice. But this grass right here, 
has been sort of throughout the years this is where i sort of prone made because it lands right behind the sandbags so if you get this spawn right here with the support that's golden like <laughs> you can literally do this forever and they can't do anything about it unless they get a little bit lucky but like this is this is a this is a horrible situation to defend from or to attack this flag if you have a support doing this. I think this is the worst spawn by far. Um, as far as tube spawns, <laughs> this is a very niche thing, but it's one thing I also experimented with. Um, so the thing about as I mentioned in my tube video, if you tube straight up the tube will eventually land about 30 meters away, away from you. So, that's the, if you spawn tube to defend this flag. The good thing is that this range, exactly where you spawn, you just have to walk over here. This range is exactly the correct range. And you just about manage to reload and run here as it lands. So I just think I, I know this can work and it would be like if any one of you in this cup can make this work it would be the most fucking epic thing ever. But <laughs> you can literally have two tubes you can tube two times at the same time you can have one tube land and kill someone and you can tube someone else at the same time. It would be fucking epic. Uh, another th interesting thing is that this garden spawn with the tube, obviously this is shit with the tube. You can't tube there. But similarly, this is the correct range. So you can actually do it. Obviously the tube goes a little bit left and right randomly. So this is not consistent by any means, but oh, I didn't kill myself. It landed up there, but it can work. That's the point. It can work. So I actually, I just love the idea of someone sort of spawning here, doing this. Double tube. Uh, that, that's a li literal double tube on flag. Uh, I would just, I would freak out if I saw someone do this. <laughs> that, that's like the most amazing shit ever. So uh, definitely one thing that I would try more if I played. So that brings us to this flag. Now, as you may have known uh, or I may have seen, uh, I have spawned quite a bit of support on this flag. This is one of those flags that you can nade forever. Like as long as you can stay here with the support and they don't kill you. You can you can keep them from capping this forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Obviously it's a bit cheesy. But or it's not cheesy, it's lame. It actually works consistently, but it's fucking lame. <laughs> but it works. So what can you do? Um, and the wall is sort of the perimeter so this distance at the wall here is the correct distance and um, if you spawn over here I do believe that this is also the correct distance I'm not 100% sure yeah so it, it's uh, this wall is exactly the same uh, it seems like the yeah, the TV flag is in the center of this wall, so it's the same distance from this w from this part of the wall to the flag and this part of the wall to the flag. So, um, or similar is Th this is closer, obviously. So this would be worse to nade from, but there are no spawns over here, so I think uh, the other option would, of course, be to try either go ladder or gain entrance if you're sp if they're already on flag and you're defending um, it is possible 
it is possible to sort of oh, that obviously wasn't it it is possible to sort of bounce the tube yeah you can see it is possible to bounce that guy up there yeah something like that and sort of get in here and obviously pretty self-explanatory tube 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 kill 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 now as far as uh, the flag position you know i think th right here would be the best uh, you know, for anyone who played Counter-Strike, you know that your model is... Uh, when you're peeking around the corner to the left, your model is less visible than if you're peeking to the right. And I do... Th I think it's the same in BF2. I think you're less visible when you're barely peeking around the corner to the left than to the right. It's definitely a big difference between one of the sides. I think it's the left one. It's not something I think about, but I, I remember we tested it once and I believe it was the same as in Counter-Strike. So in that case, like staying right here, you should be less visible than like here. So, but um, yeah. Oh, I guess I have to do it. I have to go to road to Jalalabad, which of all the nth maps is the one I like the least. But, um, but there are some interesting decisions to be made in terms of defending on that map. There are, there are a lot of difficult flags on uh, Jala. So let's see. Now, junkyard is this is one of those flags that's really difficult to defend properly and that's mainly because of that roof position so the only viable way to get that guy off the roof i mean if if, he's, if they're not on the roof you can do whatever you can spawn medic you can spawn tube and you know if you get the flag spawn and spawn behind them you might get lucky you might spawn over there you might spawn there like <coughs> The, the attackers are quite vulnerable if they stay within that circle or, or within the pillars there. The main problem is the roof guy. Like, if, if, if they are smart, they will go roof. And it's actually... This is one of the flags that's actually best to attack with just one guy. So, you literally just... Because here's the thing. Junkyard is a shit flag to have. It's not a good flag. It, it's a fucking annoying flag to have because it's a main flag. You feel you have to defend it, but it's fucking shit. <laughs> it's uh, it's not good. So this is not a flag I. If I was playing five v five, this is not a flag I desperately want. So I would much rather lock the enemy down to junkyard and sort of keep all the other flags. So. Ideally, you would just want to attack this with one guy who will go on that roof and just be annoying and prevent the enemy from leaving junkyard. That's what you want to do. And, you know, hopefully the rest of your team can get control elsewhere. Uh, but if there's a guy on that roof, the only viable, at least from my experience, the only viable way to get him out is to nade him. Now, the good thing is that the edge of this building or this barracks right here or whatever um, is the ex I mean if you spawn here with the support kit this is the exact range like I mean exact if you need this correctly like there's no way he's gonna survive there for any amount of time 
Like, he will run out of med packs. So this this is the only 100% method I know of to get rid of the guy on the roof. But you have to nade correctly. If you don't nade correctly, the nades don't land correctly. Um, so this is this is definitely like a, a support defense spawn in a little bit ahead of time and try to get here. Uh, and you can obviously you can also nade the flag zone from here, which is great. You can even nade in there. So uh, you know, obviously, if they are in the if the attackers are in the flag zone and, and they spot you, they will rush you. They will rush you. So you just have to defend yourself somehow. The good thing is that you can actually can you see? Yeah, you can see their feet under here. So that's actually a bit. That's actually kind of neat, actually. It, it it gives you a huge advantage with the support kit because you can literally pre-fire them because you can see where their feet are. I never noticed that before. Well, you learn something new every day. Obviously, they can also go on that roof. It's not very common to do that, but it doesn't really matter from your defensive position because you can make that roof just as easily. Um, but that's something that people... You, you, having a squad leader on that roof and have one guy jump across to that roof, that's super... That's super good. If you're intent on capping junk yard. As I said, I would not put a lot of resources into capping junk. Definitely wouldn't. Huh. Hotel is kind of similar to... You know some of the other flags who are a little uh, I, I i would not spawn i don't think i would spawn support to defend hotel i mean i guess it can work because you have these nice lanes where people will stand so you know uh, but I, I can't remember having done that but uh you know it could work and there are some good nade positions like nading from boxes is good nading from there can be decent Nading from there can be decent. Like, I, I definitely think support can be effective on this flag. But for some reason, I'm just like, I don't know. For some reason, my instinct told me that I should spawn medic, maybe. Maybe this might be one of those medic defense flags. Let me just see how it feels. Oh. Yeah. I guess if I just immediately flank or uh, strafe over here, then the cool thing here is that you can actually block the flag. And if you get one kill right there, you can hide behind here and see which way he's going, if he's gonna go for the revive or if he's not. You know, uh, I, I definitely think the, the key is to get to the edge. Because uh, unlike like the center of the wall, you don't have cover. I mean, you have cover against that direction, but you don't have cover against that direction or that direction if the guy is on the end. So st staying on the end is good because you can sort of rotate or like pivot around like this. So it's actually quite a complete cover. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think... Um, this is not an easy flag to defend it. It's a little bit more because th that's the one thing about Jalabad is that there are more spawns. Uh, some of these flags has m have more spawns than usual, especially Mosque, which has like nine or ten spawns. It's usually there are like four spawns on, on all the flags in the game. Uh, so or three or four spawns. So when you have like nine spawns on the flag, it becomes impossible to check everything. And uh, this flag has one, two, three, four, five. Is it five? It's, it's at least five spawns. Yeah, it might be five, but it, it's still more than usual. So it's like, um, 
it's th that's one of the things that makes Jalabad rough. Like, and that's one of the reasons also why when I cap on this map, I like to stay at the edge of the flag zone. So from this position, I can still cap the flag, but I, I, I'm only visible from one spawn. Whereas on this, if you stand right here, this is, in my opinion, is the worst position to defend or to cap this flag from. It's horrible. Um, I, I would much rather stand at the edges like this so that I can sort of rotate around depending on what happens. Uh, but that's another thing altogether. Market is definitely... This is the flag that I featured uh, the most in my uh, <laughs> tube video. And th the reason is that I think this is a difficult flag to, to like 1v3 tube on. Uh, because just like... Just like all flags on Jalabad, it has unusual many spawns. So one to... Three, four, five. Is it five on this as well? Yeah. So, I mean, if, you, or six, it's actually six because you spawn the roof as well, right? Yeah. So if you get the roof spawn and they just happen to stand in the middle of the fountain, yeah, sure, that's an easy kill. But that's the problem with this flag. The, I think the best tube spawn is over here because it allows me to sort of check that uh, trash position and then get onto the hair and from here i can actually sort of try and do something but again this might be one of the flags where i sort of decide that fuck it i'm not gonna take the chance i'm gonna get the roof spawn and i'm just gonna try and spawn medic because the thing is, from from some of the spawns on this flag in particular, I would much rather be medic than tube. And I definitely don't want to be support because it's horrible. G just geometrically, the fountain is hard to nade because it's round. Everything sort of bounces off in different directions and it's hard to hit exactly where you want to hit. So it's not a good nade flag. It can work for tube depending, like if you get like dream spawn, if you get the spawn here and they just happen to stand right there, yeah, then it's good. But for all other situations, this is definitely, from in my mind, this is a medic defend flag. You spawn in medic. And similarly to what I said about um, construction on Gulf, this is also a flag where it's not unlikely that you will have some kind of standoff or like a stalemate where one guy might be hiding trash and you you with your m16 you're literally unable to headshot him and kill him in one burst or one shot so it's like you might have to stay here for a while and in terms of survivability over time there's nothing that beat the medikit because obviously you can heal yourself so i definitely think this is a medic i would most likely spawn medic to um, to defend this flag and just try to, you know, hope I get, uh, survive the first few seconds and get into position where I can have some cover. So, um, which brings us to the last flag of this video, the mosque. Now, uh, previously I had some success spawning support and nading out this flag. Um, that were, that can work if you spawn here. Because it's, it's kind of nice you have these palm trees that it's not so easy to see where you are exactly. So you can sort of... You can sort of... Um, made in behind here. But it is not... <laughs> in the same way I, that it's hard for them to see you, it's also hard for you to see exactly where they are. So it's like... This is... This is not like super consistent. I'm not gonna say it is. It can work... But um, uh, I don't think it would be my number one choice. Uh, now this this flag has like nine spawns. It's ridiculous, and like half of them are on this side and half of them are on that side. So it's like if you spawn tube, it's like fifty-fifty. You get this kind of spawn, which if I know I'm gonna get this spawn, I might choose support. But if I get any of the flag spawns 
<laughs> Which I'm okay. If I get any other flag spawn, I I want to be support uh, assault. Uh, like this spawn is ideal because it's hard for them to check it consistently. And one thing about a lot of people will cap this flag from the LMG position here. This is not good because there's a spawn directly behind you. Uh, the best place to cap this flag from is here, I think. Because you can spot to, uh, towards that wall over there. And if if the guy comes around from here to defend, there is a chance that he's not going to check the blind spot here. So, uh, one thing, if you're defending this flag, always, if they're already on flag and you're spawning to defend, always check here. <laughs> and if you're capping this flag, stay this kind of area. Have someone at least stay in this kind of area. Because he can very quickly pivot around here to help from this angle and... Uh, to stand in the middle here, I wouldn't. I, I don't think that's advisable. Uh, it depends a little bit. Like obviously, if you ch if you check your scoreboard and you see that they don't, they only have one available spawn. That's one thing. But if they're gonna spawn in like multiple people to defend, then uh, staying in the center here is very vulnerable. But yeah, I, I would definitely spawn tube here and sort of hope I get one of the flank spawns here. Because that can be super powerful. But as I said, having support uh, on the far end here can also work. Now that's the one thing about this map that is... Uh, I do think support can be a lot more effective if you really work on it. Like, uh, some of you might have noticed I've been trying out a new initial lately where I spawn support from behind the wall here as you as. Because I figured that I can actually nade the flag quite decently from here. Now, it has been a little bit hit or miss. Because once they figure out what you're doing, it's not very effective. You know, and to go to this car position, this is a really nasty position to sort of camp from. It's not really that likely that someone will just immediately spot you here. And you can sort of see everyone pushing around here. Um... But there are definitely th the one the one thing about Jalabad is that I don't know if you, like if people ever thought about this, but there is not a single roof that doesn't have a ladder. Oh, well, this one doesn't because it has a stairs. But every roof can be uh, e you can go on every single roof, pretty much. Is there a ladder on this roof? No, this roof has no ladder. But most roofs have a ladder on this map. And it sort of makes me, at least, think of the possibilities. Because the potential here is huge. If someone were to sort of perfect it, it could be ridiculous. 60 meters, by the way, it's just about the nade range. So this is actually nadeable. You can actually nade the fountain from here. And you can nade and spot hotel from here. Um, I don't expect this to be used much in BF2. But had BF2 been what Counter-Strike or what CSGO is, this definitely would have been explored. Because the potential here is... Uh, well, the potential is potentially huge. <laughs> A bit clumsily said, but... I definitely... Uh, I definitely think there's something there. But even if you're not camping the roofs, just going on the roof to get... Like, you can literally spot any everything. You can see everyone pushing around. You can see exactly how many are going. You can literally call two guys market. And uh, one guy hotel. Like, you can see everything from here. So, if you're a squad leader and you just go up here for like 30 seconds, that might be all... 
that might give you all the info you need and you can take spawns up here and just immediately bail when you see that you have the opportunity to sort of like um, yeah i definitely think the roofs on this map is definitely the key to and i think it's also one of the reasons why it plays differently to a lot of other maps it's it's just laid out in a different way and the roofs are i think the roofs are a key to mastering this map which i cannot claim that i'm master of this map it's, this is one of the maps i always didn't like that much but yeah i'm gonna end the video here i don't know for how long i've been talking but i can feel on my voice it's probably been a while so hopefully you find it useful i'm looking forward to the cup it's gonna be exciting with all these even teams to see who's going to come out on top and how it's going to go. But later.